same oversized sweater I've been showing nonstop. I'm ride or die cake donut. Sparkling rose. Sparkling rose. You put it in, you're not in the shot. I think it kind of speaks to imposter syndrome. I'm just playing up kind of the messiness because I don't really have a choice. Welcome to another vlog. We are here at our favorite little breakfast sandwich donut shop. It's a little local family owned place. So we're grabbing one of those and then running some errands today. It's a beautiful fall day, sunny and in the 60s. I'm in my same oversized sweater. I've been showing nonstop over on Instagram. It's men's J. Crew. I'm in a size medium. It's nice and cozy. I just have it on with some leggings and boots for the day. I feel like what makes their breakfast so much so good is the English muffin. Like I think they're making them. I'm pretty sure they are. It's really fresh today. Yeah, it's really tasty. Really good. Coffee's fresh too. Thank you for getting me my buttered crunch. Mm -hmm. They haven't had this in a while. 10.30. Yeah. I wonder if it's common that like to prefer cake donut over I guess a yeast donut. I think it's called a yeast donut. I think so too. I'm ride or die cake donut. I think the yeast donuts are a lot sugar, a lot more sugary. Really? <clears throat> it seems like it. Like when you eat one of those, it's usually like very sugary. Interesting. It doesn't seem very sugary. It's cakey though. Right. It's good. It's like the old fashioned donut. Yeah. Do you think this is old fashioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right, it is. You're not even a vlogger. This is like prime, <laughs> prime content. Best part. VIP? Yep. Aren't we lucky? Yeah. It's never not busy in this place. I know. <laughs> Back again in the car. Currently at the library, Sam's grabbing his book that he reserved to get it sent over here. I think we're gonna go on a little walk. The weather's really nice and I feel like I need some movement today. We just got back from running some errands and my Shirley order came in. This is non-alcoholic wine and it's the best that I've tried so far and I really like that they have carbonated options. Their carbonated options are really good. So this is the Brut. It's supposed to be like a champagne. champagne. Which one's that? Sparkling Rosé. Sparkling Rosé. You put it in not in the shot. <laughs> Sparkling rosé. Um, and then this one, which is like a dark red, it's called a bubbly red, and I love a sparkling red wine. So this is amazing. I've not found another brand that carries anything like this. I've tried the rosé and the red, and so I'm gonna try the champagne for the first time. Maybe I'll do that one tonight. So I'm really excited about it. I will put my code and my link down in the description so you can go check them out and get a discount off of your order. Another thing that's really great about these is they are made with wine. So what they do is they have a special process where they're able to de-alkalize the wine, but this is made with real grapes, which I really like because I don't like to have any strange ingredients or anything like that. So I love the fact that it does have real wine in it that they've taken the alcohol out of and then some other like fruit concentrates as well just to add to the flavor a little bit. So you get the taste of wine without the not so great effects of it. Jealous. Chicken by Sam. It looks gorgeous. All right. We are getting ready to have dinner. Sam is cooking tonight. He made a very delicious looking breaded chicken and we're gonna have it with some pasta and Alfredo. Getting ready to pour our cocktails though. He already has his cocktail poured and I'm getting ready to pour my little champagne. 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 <laughs> it's a nice glass. Cheers. 
I'm impressed. Is it good? It really tastes like champagne. If you're like a mimosa drinker, it truly tastes like champagne. Surely tastes like champagne. <laughs> Tag it, trademark it. I feel like this is that's good. one of the yeah. closest. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Nice. It's nice and dry. Has a little bit of tart to it. It's refreshing. I think it'll be good with dinner. I am currently getting ready for some meetings for the day and then I'm presenting in one of my labs today. I slept on wet hair last night so I woke up and it was pretty crazy. So I just went through and tried to kind of like touch up a few pieces with a curling iron. Now I'm going to give it some hairspray and a little dry shampoo. This is the hairspray that we've used for a while. Cheap products. You can get this at Marshalls or... Um, TJ Maxx or Ross if you're in California. I know they don't have Ross out here. I don't know if they have it in other places on the West Coast. I know they have it in Vegas. At least they used to when I lived there. And then I'm just gonna give a light dusting of dry shampoo. I'm just playing up kind of the messiness because I don't really have a choice. Lastly, I'll come in with a little bit of hair oil. This is the hair oil I've used for years since I lived in San Francisco. I will link it below for you. It is the very best. I've recommended it to many people. They've loved it. You just need one small little bit. And then I'm just gonna lightly kind of go through. It just helps to tame it a bit. And then I just rinse my hands with water and wipe them on a towel. the finished look. I feel like it's presentable enough. I'm going to go pop in some earrings. Just sat down at my desk and realized I forgot to put in the earrings. I am getting ready for a meeting that is in the next 20 minutes or so. I need to do a little bit of quick preparation for that. And then I have a meeting right after that with one of my labs, which I am presenting in. I essentially have modified slides from my dissertation proposal. I'm gonna be talking about experiment one for my dissertation, doing a little simulated run through of the methodology. So at the start of my dissertation studies, there is a practice phase. And so that's what I'm going to run through with the lab is the practice phase. It's simpler than the actual learning phase. And I think for the purpose of demonstration and familiarizing ourselves with the materials, that makes the most sense. So that's what I'm going to do today. Like I mentioned, I have another meeting coming up soon that I want to do some quick prep for. So I'm gonna do that now and I will check back in with you in a bit. All right, just finished that first meeting of the day. Something that I was thinking about this morning and reflecting on is the fact that I am a fifth year student when we are in our first semester, our first year. And we interact with fifth year students when they present on their dissertation work in the lab and so forth. Just the, the view that we have, the perspective that we have on being in their position, I thought they have it all figured out. I don't feel that way. I think it kind of speaks to imposter syndrome for one. I think imposter syndrome seems to persist. If you're in the first semester of your PhD and you feel like you don't understand things. You don't know how to interpret some of those figures. You get nervous to give presentations. That feeling isn't going to necessarily go away and that's not a bad thing. You will develop tools and a sense of confidence. You will find strategies. It's not a bad thing in the sense that like doom or anything like that. Everyone is dealing with those feelings of imposter syndrome. I think by being a little bit more vulnerable and authentic and forthcoming about those feelings, maybe we can take away some of their power. Remember to be kind to one another, even to us fifth year students, because I promise we're having a hard time too. Apple 
picking today? Pumpkin picking. Pumpkin picking. Hopefully some, I don't know, donut picking. Get it, baby. No, <laughs> just one. She goes picking apples. My adventurer. Thank you.